original house. This was the bedroom. Watch it, this shit. And this was his. Fuckers been in here rummaging through everything. This was his house. Yes, little wood stove here. Had a chair here, and this is where he lived. This is the kind of equipment he used. There's his kitchen cupboards and oh, what's this? Oh look, yeah, it's, it's a, a bird. bird. It's, it's a totem pole. I think I should take that home. <coughs> An original Whitland. Now can you imagine living in here. This was his bedroom. I shattered fucking off. Yeah, there's an old tractor in there, as there was. I haven't looked in here recently. Yeah. Guitar? It's an old Sears guitar, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Eh? It's gone right to pieces. I got a bunch of guitars and banjos and, and accordions. And, and he was a, a real nut bar in the uh, musical thing. He was a nut bar and everything. That's, that was a good old picture, actually. <clears throat> well, what I gotta do is come in here and burn all this shit. Get it out in a pile. How long since someone did live there? Seven or eight years. No, about seven. Six. Well, this is. We leave the doors open, too. He made the wall to fit the piano. That's cool. Toast. See it up? Yeah. Seized? Nicely seized. dad was here that was all good to go. This was his uh, couch and this was his spare bedroom because he was always going to get a woman in here. So this was his spare bedroom. Kind of nice, you know. I just love how hand built it all is. Oh my shattered truck. Even this look. And it's never uh, new 2 by 4s It's all scrap lumber. <clears throat> Well, that's pretty neat. You know, the poor old man. Fuck. He used to get, and he used to live out there in the winter. This little shed there, that was his winter abode. He had a little stove in there. You know, pretty scary. Mm. Got a good uh, gas stove here. I thought if I rented her out, I'd let the stove go with it, you know. He had a bathtub and a turlet. She's kind of full of water. His windows are falling off. 
But I said to him, he said, you got to promise me one thing. You won't bulldoze that place. I said, no, I never will. He was obsessed with musical stuff. Yeah, I can tell. Quite an old man. Fuck. I miss the old turd. He'd come down and sit. He, he came every day for a coffee. Over to your place? Yeah. But you could tell he was only four foot six. I gave him this oil stove to use, and he hooked her all up, and then, God damn it, uh, he wouldn't buy oil. He's got a basement. He dug it out by hand. He dug this fucking thing by hand. And the wall's down. I just forget which wall. I think it's this wall here. You can't see it. He nailed all short ends of two by fours together to make like a block wall. And all the cement he poured by mixing it in a wheelbarrow. Take forever. Oh fuck. Dude. Hundreds and hundreds. Well that uh, that building there, all the way through to the end of this building, there's a wall this high, Scott, that thick that he poured out of a cement mixer. Or out of a wheelbarrow. Wow. Fucking unbelievable. And the crazy old prick, like, over here. <clears throat> but he was, he was so set in his ways. See the siding there? Yeah. That was four by eight sheets of, of chipboard or plywood. Instead of just nailed on, he cut it up and made siding. Right. So it leaked ten times as much air. <laughs> and he's got a wood stove in the basement there. And uh, that was to heat the place. Good old tractors take pictures, huh? Yeah. Oh, I know. There's an old car break here, too. Yes. Somebody came in here and stole all, all the, uh, <coughs> Metal. There was tons of scrap metal. You see the car frame? Come on, away. Oh. That's cool. Yeah. They say there's no more barn finds, so there's a barn find. It's totally usable, you know. Yeah. It's remarkable to good shape. Did he farm right up until the end? Yeah, pretty well. Homemade tractor. <laughs> That's a cock set over there. They'd be a good front end for rat rods. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a heavy duty front end. Oh yeah. <clears throat> this thing's probably still totally usable. I think so, yeah. <clears throat> what I should do is take that home and redo it. It's all there, you know. Cut the bolts out, put new wood. It'd be use of a little shit spreader, really. <laughs> that was the previous another building that was here? No, no, that's uh <laughs> can you believe <clears throat> there was shit laying around such as it is. Quinny West came to me and said I had to clean all this shit up and I had to do it now or they'd come with somebody and clean it up and give me the bill. And I said, you motherfucker. So we bulldozed this in a pile, and it's supposed to get burnt. Everybody comes and dumps their shit here, you know. 
And the deal is, I said, when I go away, I want you to burn it. But as long as they get a dump, they don't care about coming back and burn them. No. Like in the winter, it's the only time I'd want to do it, you know? I like the wood cab on that thing. Yeah, he always built cabs on his tractor. Kind of like your uh, float. Yeah. I was going to come up here with him one day. He, <coughs> he was feeding this field to oats, right? So I come up to give him a hand. So I, I got him a seed drill. <coughs> oh, it's out there. <coughs> Anyway, he was doing this little bit of the field up here. I rode on the back, and made sure that the hoppers were full and it was using seed on all of them. And he drove. Well, Jesus Christ, to plant an eight, two acres or three acres, whatever we planted, took about half a day. And then I come and combined it for him, and I. Out of two or three acres, I wouldn't fill that deep free or that fridge with seed. Wow. I'd like to fence this and put the fucking horses in. <clears throat> yeah. American natives were here. I got a totem pole. Well, they frame still there. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah you got pictures of that. It's in good shape. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to get up here, no matter what, and get it out of here, Rob. I'll just bring Baruska up here. Well, maybe when I come up to get the to cultivate her garden. I'll just whip in and pull the fucking thing out and pick it up in the front end loader and take it home. Yeah, too good. Job. Yeah. Well, we cleaned it. Was two years ago we cleaned it out, right? Got yeah. It there. I think it was more than two years ago, Rob. To be honest with you. Piano's a. Uh seized up. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have I to. Heard you. I heard you. We're Did gonna you? have to give her the WD-40 trick, Rob. Or yeah, whatever the wood equivalent is. Oil. Teak oil. oil. Yes. Yeah, or maiden oil. He had about four wells dug by hand. Cocksuckers dumping their scrap right there. And they were the that big around Scott and 20 feet deep and he would climb down a makeshift ladder <laughs> he'd get down there he'd fill up a two and a half gallon pail climb back up he had one an old piece of log and he yeah, winch it up, it up yeah. dump the dirt out lower it down climb down and he he had at least four of them 20 feet deep <coughs> Can you imagine the thousands of times he climbed that fucking ladder? He was always single, or did he no, he had a wife? No, he had a wife, and she died, and he had a son and four daughters. And matter of fact, he has sisters and brothers. The, the one sister lives in Brighton, Freeman's. They're multi-millionaires, and them cocksucker wouldn't even buy that guy a half a quart of wood to keep warm with. But the ones that have Brown Ridge or the bus service? Uh, I think the bus service. <coughs> Cocksuckers. I told the sister one time, she went, finally went to see him in the hospital, I was there. She said, you know, I'm, I'm Carl's sister. I said, yeah, I gathered that. And 
I said, I'm amazed that you guys haven't been around the last five years. Well, we're busy. I said, yes, yeah, so am I, but I always got time for the old Well, you helped them out over the years, eh? And I said, uh, you ever been up to his house? Well, no. I said, I'd love to come and get you sometime and take you down and give you a tour of his house. Fuckers. I said, he's out there at midnight with a fucking chainsaw and a coal oil lantern. How many times did he almost lose it due to taxes? Oh, yeah. Well, that's how I... bailed him out. I ended up buying it. Uh, he, uh... He owed $10,000 tax. <coughs> and they were going to take it. And he only had 20 days left. He wanted me to buy it. So the deal was I pay the taxes and pay off the mortgage, and it was mine. So I think I got the whole thing for like thirty or thirty-five thousand. But I mean, how many millions would that be worth out there in the island? Yeah, too much. Just incredible. But he had no choice. He had nothing. At least you you let him stay in there till he died. Yeah, I told him I said I'll take it. And I'll buy it from you. And I said, the deal is, as long as you're alive, you can live there free of charge. No, no rent, no nothing, no taxes, just live there. Oh, he was happier than a clam. That old man, I'll tell you, what a guy. He loved musical instruments of every kind. He could even play some of them. I got a fiddle, 12 string guitar, a couple of six string. I got a nice banjo. I think two fiddles. We found quite a few things in there. There's a couple of guitars and yeah, the little flute things. All apart. How did the piano get in there? Any idea? Yeah, they carried up them goddamn steps and put it in. <laughs> Lucky the wall was the width right. required. What a, what a good know. old fart, though. You know, Jesus, you never met him, did you? No. He was just, he come here. Well, farmer man, I, I always called him farmer man. He wanted to be a farmer. You want a coffee? Well, yes, I can drink a coffee. I could eat a piece of toast, too, you know. <laughs> and he'd get a piece of toast, and he'd get the knife, and he'd just take a little. And there wouldn't be enough goddamn butter. Like, you could take one of those little packets, cut it in four, and that's what he would put one quarter on a piece of bread. And then he'd, here, have some jam. Dip in a little. He'd scratch away at that son of a bitch just about sharpen the knife. But oh my god, the That's thing. Right. He said, like he was only four foot eight, ten. He started to work when he was uh, 11 or 12 years old in a sawmill, piling boards right off the saw as they come out. So, zing, zing. And they're heavy, you know, two by tens or whatever, and wet. And, uh, then he uh, worked peeling pulp wood, like poplar trees, they peel the bark yes. all off, saw it into four foot lengths, and stack it in boxcars, four dollars a cord. Oh, oh my God, and, and some of the stories, you know, they'd walk to town on Saturday or, so, or Sunday, it was like an eight mile walk. Him and his brothers and sisters would go, and it just went on and on. You think, how goddamn tough were these old bastards, you know? He showed me, he said, you know how to dig a well? I said, not really. Call in the backhoe when you need a well. Yeah. You? But anyway, he, uh, he got in the well and showed me. He was down about that far then. And he gets the pail in the middle, and then he, he's got a little short shovel, and he starts. And he goes around just like a corkscrew. And he just goes round, 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 and down she goes. You know, it's not 
stick the shovel in. It's, and he just kept going round, 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 and fill the bucket, and then climb up the ladder, crank her up, dump it out, climb down the ladder, take this hill out of the middle, and then round, 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 you go. And that thing was just. But you. He had one dug twenty some feet deep, and he was just getting water, just getting mud, and starting to seep in, and that. We had a tremendous rainstorm. The rainstorm came and washed all the dirt piles he had right back down the hole. He went out in the morning, and there was that much depression. It was full again. That's I think the last one he started to do. He said that was enough of that. 